Welcome back to WIS Prime Time, leading the charge to increase resiliency. That is what the team at Fort Jackson is setting out to do with an upcoming initiative. It actually is happening today and tomorrow. The Fort Jackson Resiliency Stand 2. It works to arm people with tools that they need to overcome adversity, whether that be providing available services, tips, tools, resources, both on the installation and in the local community. We are honored to have with us in the studio Brigadier General Jason Kelly. General Kelly, always great to see you. Likewise, Judy. Thank you for having me. Listen, I want you to give an overview of what this is because we have worked really hard to start to normalize conversations centered around holistic health mental health, well-being, and that applies not just for us every day in civilian life, but for our soldiers as well. Judy, I may have to bring you to do a spot for us <laughs> because that's exactly what we're getting after. And we're purposely calling this a stand to, vice a stand down. So often in the Army, we have a cessation of work or operations after something happens. We do it to educate and train, but we're proactively doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's appropriate that we're calling it a stand to because on the heels of Veterans Day, yes. which really uh, we honor our veterans, but it was or is honors Armistice Day mm -hmm. or Remembrance Day in the Commonwealth, which is the conclusion of fighting on the Western Front during the First World War. Yes. Stand to. During the First World War, trench warfare, the troops would man the trenches in anticipation of an attack that would happen normally dawn or dusk. Mm -hmm. Though we don't anticipate an attack at Fort Jackson, right. what we are doing is educating. We are going to talk about what's available for service members, families, Department of the Army civilians, retirees to help all be the best version of themselves. And you know what is so important is that not only you as the commanding general leading the way and normalizing this conversation, but people sharing their experience because, you know, you can talk about all of these things all day long, but when you live it and when you lead by example, it resonates in a completely different way. Who's going to be speaking at the Stand To event? Well, I know today it started and it's going to continue on Friday, but who are the participants going to be hearing from? So we've got three dynamic speakers that are going to share personal stories, uh, going to talk about things that have allowed them to be resilient and continue to thrive. Mm. So uh, Miss Sandra Mayweather uh, is going to share uh, a story. We're going to have Command Sergeant Major Linwood Barrett is going to share. And then our own Colonel Ken Dwyer, who leads our leading train brigade, uh, is going to share. And then we're going to conclude uh, day two with Major General Greg Martin. Oh, wow. Whose book, uh, The Bipolar General, uh, going to be fantastic. And as you called out, we're having these conversations now. Yes. And sharing their stories, but what's available for us all, and I do, I want to normalize it so that the things that are available at Fort Jackson, things that are available in our Army. This is why you want to join the Army team right. because of our commitment. And you talk about, obviously, the commitment to the soldier, but that extends to the family because they're such an important part of the support system. And again, normalizing this conversation, making it okay to ask for help, making it okay to tap into these resources that are available, you know what I mean? But reducing the stigma, all of that plays a big part in being more proactive rather than reactive after a tragedy has happened. That's just it, Judy. And, and we're going to do it through the five domains mm -hmm. of holistic health and fitness offered over the course of the next couple days. Mm -hmm mental readiness, physical readiness, nutrition readiness, spiritual readiness, mm. sleep readiness, things that we know are necessary for us all to be at our best. 
And at the end of the day, what we do at Fort Jackson is we generate readiness. We generate readiness for our army. We generate readiness through our nation. I want ready soldiers. I want ready families. I want a ready community. And that's what we're going to be working on over the course of the next couple of days. And you know, that's the perfect segue for my last question because Fort Jackson is a part of our community, but you also have such great partnerships, um, such strong partnerships within the community. And I want to be sure to acknowledge some of the off-post vendors, including Victory Ranch, Palmetto Pathfinder, Soldiers Angels, the Big Red Barn Retreat, SC Thrive, the Dorn VA Suicide Prevention Team, also the South Carolina Department of Affairs. I mean, it's a whole network there creating such a strong system of support um, that we want our soldiers and family members and everybody to utilize um, for that readiness, not just under attack, but for whatever comes that way. I, I could not agree more. Yeah. And this community, I, I've never seen anything like it. Mm. Uh, I, I've said it before, uh, and when I'm being interviewed or when I'm talking about Columbia, when I'm talking about the Midlands, when I'm talking about the state of South Carolina, uh, I'm closing out my 29th year of service. Wow host of duty stations and I've never seen anything like what I see here, what I experience, the many offerings that are afforded those in this community because all that live and work and serve at Fort Jackson, mm -hmm. they don't all live right. on Fort Jackson. They That's live right. in this community and to do this together, to generate readiness together is exactly what's happening and we're grateful for all they're going to help us do this. Well, thank you so much. As an Army wife myself, I have to thank you for your leadership, your duty, your respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. Did I get it all in there? You got it Did all. Did I get it all you in? Got it all. You got it all. <laughs> Not Army values, but uh, General Kelly, thank you so much for your leadership and for setting the standard, setting the example, because I think there are a lot of civilian organizations will look at this and say, you know what? We need to take a more proactive approach as well and be ready to stand too to meet whatever challenges we face in our families, but also in our community. So we welcome you back to have this conversation and giving us an insight about what's happening over at Fort Jackson to make sure our soldiers are ready every single day. Thank you, Jude. Thank you, General Kelly. We'll be back with more prime time after this.